my god, it's been a year since this video. Hi, my name is PG Lomet, I waste your time. Today I'll be showing you how to make the perfect slide transition in DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't seen my AMV Basics tutorial already, I suggest that you go watch that because it goes over the basics on how to do this stuff. In this video, I'm just gonna go more in depth on what I do to make it look even better. All right, let's get started. All right, first off, I have my clips like this. I'm just gonna compound clip them so these clips can be contained in a little timeline so I can do some twixing later if I want to. I'm just gonna go here and then right click and go up to new compound clip or I have it bind to C or I can just do it really easily. Just like this and like that. All right, and I'm just gonna shorten these down to about one second each, just so I can do this really quickly, just like that. All right, and now we can start doing our slides. So what I'd like to do with my slides is I first gonna, I'm gonna add a adjustment clip. Don't know how to do that. You go to your effects library, you get it down to toolbox, you go to effects, and then you go to adjustment clips. I already have adjustment clips in my media pool over here, so I'm just gonna grab this one and put it along our a clip like this. I'm just gonna duplicate this by holding alt and dragging it over to the next clip. Just like that, and then we're gonna go into our first clip like this. We first are gonna add a transform node. We can grab from the little arrow uh, transform thing right here from the toolbar that's here, and then we could have this node connected to our timeline. And if it's not connected already, you can just grab this line, connect it to the yellow input, a little triangle right there, and then you connect this square to the yellow input over here, and then we have our transform connected. Then, since it's the start of our clip, and we're gonna transition to the left, we're gonna transition to our next clip. I'm going to go to the end, the, where the playhead goes to the end over here. I'm going to keyframe our center value right here. I'm going to go to the left five times. So we're going to be five frames back, and then I'm going to keyframe again. And then we're going to go click this arrow to be, go back to the original keyframe. And then we're going to move our footage to the left or right, or whichever way we, that we want to slide. I, I like to go to the left, so it goes like a little swipe to the right. And I would go ab about 25% to the left. And you can just do, do this by typing 0.25 for this, and this will bring this. This is 25% uh, of the screen that's uh, going away, so we have something like that. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add mirrored edges. So go to edges down here, click the canvas, and hit mirrored. And now we have our mirrored edges like this. And if you play it back, you can see that it's not very, really, it doesn't slide very nicely. And so we're going to need to adjust these splines. So how do we do that? We're going to go up to the spline tab that's right up here. Click this and this little graph is going to pop up and then we're going to click displacement under our little transform node here and that'll be our what we just keyframed so that's our first keyframe and that's our last keyframe and as you can see here if we click uh, this right here we can zoom to fit so our, both of our keyframes are visible in our spline graph we're going to highlight the both keyframes like this so we're going to hit s and then we're going to adjust our line by holding the handle like this and then bringing it down to something that looks like this and then we have start of our slide we can even make this a little bit looser it's not that much all right and that looks pretty good to me now we're gonna go back to our timeline then we're gonna go to the next clip which is this one here we're gonna click our media in we're gonna grab our transform node then we're gonna go to the beginning we're gonna keyframe from right here and then we're gonna, we're gonna keyframe right here and then we're gonna go to the end keyframe here again let's go back to our first spot so if we slid to the left so we moved our footage to the left we need to start our footage from the right like this, about 25% about, uh, again. So this time it'll be 0.75. And then we can put mirrored edges on like this. We're gonna open our spline graph. We're gonna click displacement. We're gonna get our graph here. We're gonna select it. We're gonna hit S. And then we're gonna make our curve just like this. Something like that, maybe even a little bit more steeper. Something like that would work. And then we're gonna slide this like just like that. Now we have something like this, which is pretty good, but we can improve it a little bit more. So I'm just gonna raise all these adjustment clips. And next I'm gonna add a shake. If you don't know, if you don't know how to add shakes, I have plenty of tutorials on it. My favorite to use is the expression shake. I'll link it in the top right or right now. And so I'm just gonna remake one of my expression shakes right now with a little style I've been doing lately. So I'm gonna grab another adjustment clip. I'm gonna put it below here and I'm gonna extend it. I'm gonna right click and open that in Fusion. Get rid of this, and then I am going to. Oh, you're going to do hit space, and then you type in transform, and you want to add the one that does not have the XF at the end, just that one right there. Oh, this right there. Make sure you got it. Hit add, and then uh, put it on our line like this. And then we are going to go and use a modifier called anim curves. Anim curves allows you to put a preset graphs, and one of the preset graphs that they have is an elastic graph, which gives you a nice little shake. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click the position Y, go down to modify width. I'm going to go to anim curves and we're going to go into the modifiers tab and we can adjust these anim curve settings so what we want to do is make sure that the source is on duration just like that we're going to pick our curve to easing and we're going to put our in out we're going to put the out to elastic like this and if we play it back you can see 
this is how our shake is. So the way that our anim curves works is that the offset is usually what our value is gonna be at our first frame. So first frame is at zero, and then you can see that everything is normal because uh, for this value, uh, to in the middle will be zero. And then in the scale will be what amount of numbers are gonna be added to the offset. So at the end, it's gonna add 0.5, and then we'll end up at a value of 0.5, just like that. So if you want, the shake to end up in the middle and to offset this by the same amount up here but in the ne in the negative so basically we want to have it end up in the middle we had to negative 0.5 so it's going to start at a value of negative 0.5 and then it's going to scale up uh, by 0.5 and that will end up with zero because you have negative 0.5 plus 0.5 and that equals zero so as you can see we have something like this and it will end up at zero but the way that we can make it better is if we just put an expression and it'll be very easy to adjust our shake so we hit equal sign uh, in our value box right here and then it'll bring up this expression thing right here so we just take our little plus sign and then we're going to drag it to the numbers of our scale like this and then we're going to put in front of the scale we're going to put the minus sign so now it's going to take that value and it's going to be negative so well, however we adjust our scale it's going to be it'll end up at zero every single time so the way i'm going to put the strength i'm going to put my shake at is going to be 0 0.05 for this one and it just has a little scale like that and then we can adjust our time scale in order for to adjust our speed so right now it's pretty fast and if we adjust our time speed down to 0 0.25 that's where i've been putting it recently and you can see how looser our scale is i might raise it up a little bit right here to like 0.35 but you can see it's much slower compared to having it at one which would be like that so let's keep it at 0.35 and if you want to see the actual graph for our anim curve go to our spline graph and then we could click the position y don't look up the don't hit the look up hit the position y and hit control to fit and you can see our actual spline graph like this and so if we adjust this value to this you can see there's a lot more waves that the shake needs to go to but if we put it down to our q5 it only has to do a couple until it hits the end of our wave over here so that is how you use anim curves and this is the shake that i like to do recently so all right now we have something like this and then we're just going to duplicate this shake so it goes over here as well but now that looks pretty good. I like the motion of that. So another thing we can add is a blur. So if you don't know how to add a blur, I have a tutorial. I'll link it up here as well. That's where I get my special blur that I'm going to use and show you, which is the defocus gamma. So I'm going to add another adjustment clip. And this one's already about 12 frames long. So I'm going to shorten it to about, let's go, let's go eight frames. That could be good. We're going to open this in the fusion page. Make sure we click this, right click, and then hit open in fusion. All right, here we go. And then we're gonna shift space at a defocus gamma. If you don't have defocus gamma, you don't wanna get it, you can use the defocus node. It'll have similar controls. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe our defocus size like this. We're gonna bring it up all the way to 10. And then at the end, we're gonna click the keyframe here, and then we're gonna bring it down to zero. Then we're gonna bring up this image gamma to set of five, we're gonna put six. And then we're going to put these lens type to either one of these uh, shapes right here instead of the circle. So that, that's what uh, it looks better. And then lastly, we're going to open our spline and then we're going to do the same thing we've been doing, a curve like this. And then we can just duplicate this over here. Another thing we can add is exposure. So I'm going to add another adjustment clip. Let's make it uh, about the same size or a little bit longer. It doesn't matter as much. And actually, I'm going to put it underneath the blur instead of having it uh, on top of the blur. It's like that. We're going to go inside it, right click, open infusion. All right, here we go. Now we're going to add a brightness and contrast node. It should be this list one right here. And then if we can either keyframe the gain, which does the, the highlights of the uh, the picture, or we can do the brightness, which does everything. And I think I'm going to do brightness for this one. So we can do it like a 0.1, keyframe that, and bring it to 11, and then get it again, and then bring it down to zero. And then I'll do another ease out graph that we usually do like this. And then now we have a nice little flash. And then let's duplicate this over here. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, one more thing we're gonna add on top of everything else is a two frame adjustment clip. I'm just gonna put this up, up here and then we're gonna put it in between the little cut that we have here in between our clips. So it goes like that. And I'll right click it, go into that side, go inside the fusion page. And for this one, we're gonna add a directional blur. We're gonna add that one right there. And then we're gonna it to the left because we are sliding to the right but we want that streaks to happen over there and just that will add a little bit more motion so it gives us a little bit more value and uh looks pretty good uh, i also added a, a cc 
or color correction. And I have a, if you want to know how to make a color correction, I have a tutorial. I'll link it to the top right again. I'm just going to add one of my preset CCs that I'm going to be putting in my paint pack soon. All right, that looks pretty good. All right. So what else can we do to improve this? I think we could uh, twix our clips. If you don't know how to twixter, again, top right corner. Uh, twixter and retime our clips. I'm not going to be showing how to do it because it's going to be too long to do, but uh, I'll teach you in that one, in that recent tutorial. It's been pretty good. So I'm just going to add my twixter clips right now. All right, now we have everything and it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to add a little scale out at the beginning so that we can actually see it on a nice fluid motion like how we would see it in an edit instead of just having it bob like this and then go with our slide. All right, now we have our final slide. We can see that we might have a little bit of motion tile because of our shape and that could be fixed very easily just by zooming into the clip, just zooming in on one of our transform nodes, just a tad bit. And so it will avoid showing all that motion tile that we usually are trying to avoid showing just like that. And yeah, that should be everything in our slide transition. And this is what I think looks uh, the best when doing a perfect slide. All right, before I go, I'd like to discuss when I would usually use a slide transition. It's usually either if it makes sense in the scene or if it helps to build the atmosphere. So like, you know where things are in the scene. I don't know, uh, I use the slides over here in order to go to the same direction as well as when you're reading the text, it's easier to go from left to right instead of uh, from right to left when you're reading. And then it also this one helps it build atmosphere. So these are two separate scenes and I just stitch them together. So it makes it looks like it makes sense why she'd be pointing to the right with a gun because he's over here. All right, for this next one, I just slid to the right because he is on the right side. And then I slid to the left because she's on the left side. And what's cool about this one is that just because I, I showed a, a tad bit of motion tell, but it kind of blends into being there in the next scene as i found out when it's going through my frame i thought it was pretty cool because it's kind of a little bit of a match cut and it, it, that's just why it just goes a little bit so smooth to me anyway and then for the, uh, this one we have uh to build the scene again let's her go to the right side and then if you go to the left he is also standing there and it just makes sense why you would slide between those scenes here I have a slide and she's like already looking to this side where the slide is coming from. So I thought that would look pretty good. And we have a zoom out here and then now he's already looking towards this side and then we could slide over here and then it goes to Lloyd that's over here and she he's looking at her on the left side and then we have another scene that's uh, looking at your on the left side. So that just makes sense to go uh, left and then right. And then for this one, it, we have a, a zoom out and then all the momentum in the movement in the footage is going to the right side. So might as well move everything to the right. So it's like it's pushing and it just guides everything to the right. It just flows very, very nicely. Here I, I do a, a slide over here. He's looking to the right and he's pointing also to the right. So it's kind of like mentally guiding your eyes to look towards the right side. And then when we go slide to the right, we see that Itsuki is over there. But yeah, those are some examples of when to use a slide. If any more questions or suggestions on what I should do in the future, please let me know down below in the comment section. If you'd like to join the Resolve in the community Discord server, there's a link in the description as well as my own server if you'd like to join. And with that, subscribe and have a good day.